Welcome to day three of learning Jira administration in just five days. Today, we're going to be covering workflows. In case you are new here, we did cover new spaces and word types on day one and two respectively. So make sure you check out those videos in case this is the first video you're starting off. This is three out of five in the series. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, drop a like and watch all the videos so that you don't get lost. Now, if you need any help with any of the stuff we're going to be covering in today's video, which is going to be workflows, they do get a little bit more complex. They do get a little bit harder, but I partnered up with release team link down below. And so make sure you give them a call because they are ready to help you out. And so any questions you may have about setting up your spaces, word types, and even workflows from today's video, make sure you call up release team so that they can help you out. All right, let's jump into Jira and let's talk about workflows. Now workflows is probably going to be one of the hardest things about Jira. Things get a little bit more complex. They get a little bit more sophisticated and you really got to know what you're doing here. Now I'm going to start you off simple. I'm going to give you that 80% solution. The stuff that you need to know to be again, 80% effective and just have enough knowledge so that you can be dangerous, but very effective with your job. And then towards the talent, we'll cover some of the more advanced topics. Again, my friends at release team are always ready to help you out with all the topics. So if any of this is going like way over your head, or if you feel it's overwhelming, call release team link down below. All right. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to go to a space. This is very important. We want to go to a space. So I'm going to go to this project titanium space and I'm going to click on the more actions here. And I'm going to go to space settings. Now, Technically, you need to be a project administrator to do this, but more importantly, you need to be a Jira admin. And so make sure that when you click on the gear in the top right corner, you see all this Jira admin section and we're going to be able to do what we're going to cover in this video just fine. So now that you're inside of a space, what you're going to want to do is you're going to come down to workflows and we're going to click on workflows. Now, this is where things get interesting. So you have a lot of options here, folks. The easiest thing to do is to modify or edit the existing workflow. That's what we're going to cover here. We're just going to add a status, maybe a transition. I'm going to show you some simple stuff here. You can, however, get a little bit more complex, right? You can start getting a little bit more advanced and you can actually create a workflow per work type or any combination therein. So you can have a workflow just for your stories. You can have a workflow for your stories and bugs. You can have a workflow just for your epics and then everything else is a different workflow. And so you can play around and get very creative and just create the types of workflows that make sense for you your processes and the way your team does work. And again, my friends over at release team, they're more than happy to sit down with you and actually help you figure this stuff out because it's not always black and white. It takes some creativity here to do a workflow just right. And if you're struggling with this, use that link down below. Okay. So now that we know that we have some basic stuff and some advanced things, there is an actual third thing. And that is we can create a brand new workflow, which is something we're going to reserve for to the very end. And so let's start with the easy task though, is let's just add a new status to an existing workflow. And so inside of the workflows for this particular space, we're going to click on edit workflow. Once we're there, we're going to be able to essentially do a few things and it's not that complicated. Adding a status is very easy. You just need to have the right permission. If you're in a team managed project, any space admin can add a status, but if you're in a company managed project, not only do you need to be a project admin, but more importantly, you need to be a Jira administrator. And so to get to this screen, we do need to be Jira admins and then we're just going to add our status. So how do we add a status? Well, it's quite simple. All you gotta do is go to the top, click on add status. Then, you have two options. You can either pick from an existing status because these are company managed projects. Anytime you create a new status, it becomes available. It just goes to a general pool where anybody can grab those statuses and use them in any other workflow. So I have statuses like accepted, or if I want to, I can create a brand new status, something that hasn't been used by any other team or any other space inside of my Jira. And so you can create something as, whatever you want, right? The, the sky's the limit. My only recommendation would be be very careful to not create duplicates. Uh, for example, canceled and canceled with one L are two different statuses. So just be careful that you don't misspell something because sometimes you're going to be able to create duplicate statuses. Now, if you do try to accidentally create a second status, as you can see here, I try to create a second status of canceled. Jira is going to be smart enough and go, wait, hold up. You've already had that status. So Jira's at least got our back a little bit. Now, when you are creating a new status, you do need to pick a status category. There's not a whole lot to do here, except pick a color. Do you want it to be gray? Work is not started. Do you want it to be in progress? Work is in motion. Or do you want to be done? As in the work has basically come to a, to a full and complete stop. So for something like canceled, 
you probably want it done because it's going to come to a stop, right? The work has been canceled. It's going to go rest and stop and it's not going to move anymore. And so you get to pick your status categories. Now, if you accidentally didn't pick the right status category, you can always click on set status. And there's a category section over here with a little pencil. We can click on that and then change the color to the right color that we want. Click on update and that's it. You can always rename your status, but I would be very, very, very careful here, folks. Never, ever, ever rename a status that is actively being used. It is very easy to break Jira for a lot of people. And if you want an angry mob coming after you and or maybe even risk your job, then rename a status. But if you don't want that, if you don't want an angry mob and you don't want to risk losing your job, follow my advice. Never, ever, ever rename a status that is being used. For now, this canceled one, I can actually rename it because I just created it moments ago. So the probability that somebody's using it is almost zero. So I can do this. I can do this renaming. Uh, of course, it already exists, but I could do a renaming, right? If I wanted to add three L's for whatever reason, this is totally fine. Just keep in mind that something like to do, I would never in a million years rename to do. Never. Create a new status and swap out your status. That's going to be your best bet. Okay, so again, if you don't want to get fired, never, ever, ever, ever rename your statuses. That is just a recipe for disaster. You will hear from somebody if you rename your done, your in progress, your to do, your opens, your close, right? The default statuses that Jira ships with. If you ever rename any of those, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. And so anyways, so now that I've given you that ominous threat, let's go back to our video. So now that we have this status, let me break down what the status means. So we have a status, obviously it's called canceled, but we have this any arrow here. And this is called a global transition. What this transition allows you to do is basically it says from any status, I can transition to this status. And from this status, I can transition to any of the ones that have any as well. And so I do not need to add a line that connects canceled to done because the line is implied by simply having this any bubble here. Any means that from this status, I can go to any other status. And from any other status, I can come back in. This is the easiest way to set up your workflow but there are some caveats, and that is that Jira is going to stack these. So it's going to give it to you in alphabetical order by color. So when your user goes to see the drop downs of statuses, they're going to see it like this because it's in alphabetical order by the color category. And so if you want your user to follow a specific set of rules, or I should say a specific path, then what you need to do is you need to add a lot of explicit transitions. And so what you're going to do is you would start by removing all of these any and you can simply click on this checkbox over here and we just remove all the any ones because these global transitions are going to cause you some headaches. The problem is now that you don't have any set up, you now need to add a transition that goes from one status to the other. And so this one you would say like start progress and then you can click on create. Now the problem is most people do this very well. You start one transition from in progress to accept it, you're going to say that like, code complete, right? And we're going to go to accept it. And then accept is going to be like approved or something. I don't know, whatever, whatever makes sense for you here. Right? So we just, I'm just making things up. So this is very easy folks. The, the forward path is usually very easy. Most people can get this right. The problem is what happens if you have to go back? <laughs> it's not that easy. You always have to add a line. If there is no line, then you cannot transition there. The, the sacrifice that you make by removing the any transition, those global transitions, is that now every path that you need to take, right? If you ever want to reopen something, well, now you got to add a line from, from to done to, re, to, to do. So we can do like reopen. Okay, so that's possible now. But if I ever want to go from done to maybe in progress, well, now I got to add another line. And so at the end of the day, you end up with all these lines that it looks like an Etch-a-Sketch and it's just not good news for anybody. So I personally recommend it's better to discipline your team. Wrong word. Communicate with your team. <laughs> Maybe discipline. The fact that this is how workflows work in Jira because it's an infinitely easier for the Jira admin to have the global transition. It will become a maintenance nightmare if you have 15 statuses and each one has like three or four in and out uh, transitions. So it just gets really complicated really, really fast. And so as you're starting out, try to stick with any and then start building up if your team really needs that extra hand holding. The last thing you need to know is that some of these items, specifically when we transition to like done, 
we need to set a resolution. A resolution in Jira is very important. When you move something to a status of done, awesome. It's cool, but not the greatest thing in the world. Jira actually cares about something that's much deeper than the status. And that is something called the resolution. And so what's often overlooked, especially when we modify the default out of the box transitions, like what we've done here, we forget to tell Jira that we want to resolve the work and we want the work to actually be crossed out and Jira timestamps it with the moment that the user moved it to done and therefore resolved the work. And so to do that, you need to pick on the transition, not the status of done, but any green status. We need to pick the lines that go into it. So in this case, I have this approved one here in the cancel status. I have this any line up here, but for each of those lines, and you're going to do this a lot. You're going to come over to rules. You're going to click on the plus button for rules. And we are going to scroll down until we find this update and issue field. Click on select. And then what we want to do is we want to set the resolution. And in this particular case, because we're moving from accepted to done, our resolution is easy. We want to do done. Click add. And that's it. Now, whenever somebody moves something from accepted to done, it'll automatically resolve for you. It'll cross it out. It'll timestamp it. It'll set your resolution date. Magical things will automatically happen in Jira and your users will be happy. If you forget to do this step, bad things will happen and your users are going to be very not happy with you. So the other method is to show a screen. And so we can do that by clicking on the transition line again. We're going to go to the rules and this time we're going to come down to show a screen. Click on select. Then you're going to choose the screen to show. Now Jira luckily already ships with one for us and you can pick on this resolve issue screen here. Click on add. And then whenever this user goes from accepted to done, a pop-up will show up and they'll have to pick the resolution type. This is a problem though right here because right now we have both the pop-up and the automatic setting as a post function. You don't want to do both. You're going to want to do one or the other, never both. Because if you do both, the user is going to pick that resolution with a pop-up and then the post function is going to kick in after the item lands and done with the value the user just set, and then it's going to override it with whatever I pick, which was done. So you don't want both. You have to pick one or the other, but as you can see, Jira is going to let you do both. In this particular case, I'm going to get rid of this rule up here, and I just want to automatically set it. And then we would do the same thing for canceled. We click a rule up here. We go down to the bottom. This time, though, we're not moving the word to done. Rather, we're going to set it to like won't do because it's canceled. So a different resolution. However, once you're done with all of this, all you need to do is click on update your workflow. It's going to publish your changes back into Jira, and then you can close this window out. We're done transitioning. We're done adding statuses. We can click on the diagram. You're going to see that our workflow is exactly the way we set it. And now your team can open up any work item in this project. I don't think we have one yet, so let's go and add some work here. And so we're going to go to our list view and we're going to click on create. We're going to create a task here. This is my first task. Click on create. We're going to check the status over here. And when I click on the drop down, we are going to be able to start progress, right? And then we can go to code complete and then we can go to done. Now keep in mind that we can go canceled or done because remember canceled, we left it with that global transition. So from any status, we can go to cancel. But what we cannot do is we can't go back because we never added those transitions to go back. So this is again why you got to pick and choose which way you want to go about this. Anyways, folks, that's how you create workflows. As you can see, a little bit more complicated. And I gave you literally the easiest way to do workflows. If you have any trouble with any of this stuff, call my friends over at Release Team. They are ready to help you out. And they have a full team that is just so seasoned and so trained and guiding you and coaching you through this entire workflow process. So use that link down below. Call up my good friends over at Release Team. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Hit that like button, share it with your coworkers, and we'll see you on day four.